Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, September the 16th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can implement into your own portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters, I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. The economic data we got today was in the form of CPI, Consumer Price Index, and it came in a little bit higher than expected at 0.2%, was expected to be 0.1%, and the core uh, Consumer Price Index, which takes out some of the more volatile uh, pricing in that index, came in at 0.3%, was expected 0.2%, so slightly higher than that. The other thing that we got was the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment, which is consumer confidence uh, in the overall economy. So the number came out at 89.8, lower than the expected 91. So uh, a bit of a pullback in consumer sentiment in regards to how robust they feel the economy is doing, how well they feel about the economy. And the University of Michigan Inflation expectations came in at 2.3%, was expected two point, or uh, last month it was 2.5%. They don't do a preliminary reading on what they expect that to be. So it came out lower than what it was last month. So uh, seeing a bit of an inflation contraction, if you will. So no real um, inflationary aspects there. Uh, on to crude oil, as you can see here, forward slash CL is down uh, 96 cents on the day, trading at 43.56. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, 44.50 area, which is right around where that Fibonacci level is, that's going to be where the resistance is. Yesterday, I talked about how the market rallied up there and was testing that uh, and kind of fell off of it. On Wednesday, it blasted right through that like it was butter. And uh, today we came up again opened right at that Fibonacci level and then have since uh, seen nothing but uh, a pullback in there, but still above uh, Wednesday's low and or, or still above yesterday's low, I should say. So that uh, could be signaling a, uh, a new area of support. So the bulls are defending this area right around uh, $43 a barrel. So keep that in line $43 to $44.50. So it's, those are gonna be the key lines in the sand, if you will, for the bulls and the bear that are gonna be battling over about that dollar and 50 area. On to gold forward slash GC. Uh, it is down just over $6 right now. Again, another area to keep an eye on is this uh, 1305, 1304 area that's going to act as support. If we get much below that, the bulls are gonna try and defend that $1,300 area uh, because if we settle anywhere below that, between 1305 and 1300, that's gonna start making it look like more of a bearish trend where we have had lower uh, highs and lower lows as we go down. That would make it settle down that way, uh, making it look more bearish to the downside. Then on to bonds, bonds right there at the point of control, which is the value area where the most time and uh, volume has been spent just so happens to be coinciding with the 200 day moving average. I could easily see the bonds wanting to stay right here, heading into the FOMC meeting uh, next week, which is the 20th and 21st two day meeting. Uh, and they will come out with their results as to whether they're gonna raise interest rates or keep them the same. Um, there's been a lot of rhetoric out of the Fed saying they want to, they're gonna to continue to raise rates, but I just haven't seen any economic data to show the robustness uh, in order to facilitate that type of move. There's no inflation and most of the economic data points have showed a bit of a contraction in the overall economy. I don't think it's probably the right time to be raising rates, but 
It's not to say that they won't. We'll have to see. Uh, moving on to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ down just slightly on the day, down six points. Um, it's been really supported by Apple's big rally over the last few days. Uh, Apple up about 15% in three days. Today, Apple's starting to show uh, a chink in their armor, if you will. But Apple just really uh, pushing higher on all the good economic or all the data around the new iPhone 7. Samsung's uh, new uh, product basically catching fire, uh, airplanes banning. Uh, the product on flight. So um, that has been a catalyst for Apple's surgeons. So uh, that being said, Apple being slightly down today, uh, the broader markets and the equities are down as well. Uh, it looked like NASDAQ coming back a little bit there. As we can see with E-mini S&Ps down uh, just over 7.7 and a half points right now but uh, taking back half of the losses seen on the day, uh, trading at 21.30. If we look at the intraday chart, which is the 15 minute breakdown on the E-mini S&Ps, as you can see, as soon as the market really started to open, we started trading to the bottoms uh, of the day, uh, right at the value area high of this day session, but very much an inside day uh, from yesterday. The market's really taking a breather. Onto a few trades that I've done in XOP, I had on the October September 36 call calendar, and I originally paid 70 cents for that trade. So I was short the September 36 puts, and I was long the October 36 puts, thinking that um, we were going to see a bit of a push higher uh, for the Septemberish area heading into that uh, Labor Day weekend. Might give us a little bit of lift. That helped out, uh, but yesterday it was really starting to test my 36 puts the last couple of days. So I didn't want those puts to really be in the money, and I wanted to take the opportunity to get out of that for a profit. If by some reason today those 36 puts went in the money that I was short, and as you can see, 36 puts are just slightly in the money. But having said that, uh, there's been enough theta decay out of those that you could probably cover it for a little bit better than what I did yesterday. I originally paid 70 cents for that trade, got out for $1.27. Last time I checked, it was trading right around uh, $1.47. So as soon as uh, this uh, ETF trades up into the 36 handle, those uh, being the very last day decay rather quickly. So uh, if you have that trade on, as soon as it gets into that 36 handle, that's when I would look to start getting out of those. Uh, really more of a gamma trade today on that because as soon as those puts go into the money, they start gaining in value rather quickly. As soon as they go out, they decay to almost nothing. So that's where I would look to get out of those if you still have that trade on. Then on to uh, United Airline. This didn't work out. I did this on the Call Butterfly uh, webinar. I did this trade for that. And th that's the difficulty in those butterflies. The way that we design them is that uh, I, I was long this and looking for it to pin right there at $47. And as you can see, the $47 was right here at the, uh, the value area or the point of control, which is where I saw this trade wanting to get comfortable. So we did it back in here got a big spike on it uh, there wasn't a whole this uh, big move higher was on um, the CEO change and a lot of the airlines started doing really well so something unforeseen but um, it became a full loser on there uh, I, I held it to the bitter end just in case we came back down to that point of control started migrating back my way but um, never got back far enough for me you know, today it's trading 51, which is outside my call. So originally I had put on the September 44, 47, 50 call butterfly. So uh, for I bought a 44 call, sold two 47 calls, and bought one 50 call. So uh, that was the ratio on that and paid 71 cents for it, got out of it for a penny this morning. Uh, all of those are in the money. So I'm I had to take it off because the last thing I want to do is start dealing with assignment fees and everything else. It's just 
get out of it, take your full loss on that. Then on to Intel. Intel actually, uh, really given back a lot today uh, after this massive spike higher. I don't know what the news was on this to be quite honest, but as soon as I saw these calls go into the money, I, I got out of them immediately. And I had on the October 37 calls that I had bought, paid 93 cents for them uh, quite a long time ago. I think it was actually, well, not quite a long time. I think it was maybe 10 days or so ago. I think it was gonna go up basically as the market fell off. They weren't looking too good, but today uh, and yesterday, today especially, with that spike higher, I was able to get out for a dollar thirty-eight. So um, looking to get out of those gapped higher. Uh, don't want to play around with it. I haven't seen any real news that would be that uh, uh, much of a jump in that. I mean, earnings aren't for quite some time now yet and uh, they popped higher, so I decided to cover that, you know, uh, get out when the probabilities are in my favor, and this is a low probability trade when you're buying calls, uh, the probabilities worked out into my favor, I decided to get out of that for a profit, so um, I would suggest you seriously consider that as well if you put on that trade too. That's all I got for you guys today. Today's webinar is going to be on synthetic short. So uh, it, there's a lot of benefits to a synthetic short rather than getting just short the underlying, which is what a lot of hedge funds do. They get short the underlying, but there's a lot of benefits with this. If you are borrowing the stock, you actually have to pay the dividend if there's a dividend during that time cycle that you are short it with the options you don't have to do that you also don't have to wait for like an uptick to get hit on that short uh synthetic or on that short strategy we can just build the strategy it will act the same way and your margin on that strategy will be a lot less than if you were to go out there and short the underlying so there's a lot of benefits to building out a strategy using options and synthetically shorting the underlying that will act basically the same way so check that out go to protraderstrategies.com it's going to be a really good one these are all kinds of strategies you need to know about in order to really broaden your uh, portfolio's uh, depth all right that's all I got for you today. If you can't take that, take it easy.